Hi guys, this is Eileen Asher. Welcome to another episode of Artists with Anxiety. I am here with Dana Bernstein. Uh, you have to remind me of the name of your Instagram, so because you do a <laughs> ton on social media. So yeah. uh, give us a, a quick introduction about yourself. Uh, like, what kind of a creative are you? Um, so uh, the short of it <laughs> is a graphic designer and a yoga teacher. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot more than that. Um, so graphic design would be Midwestern Bones on Instagram. Uh, yoga teacher would be Burn Yoga, B-E-R-N, like my last name. And then um, Crush.Design would be my Etsy store where I sell okay. bones, um, bone jewelry, other um, graphic design elements and, mm -hmm. and things that I've created. Just, you know, any product that I want to create is on there <laughs> pretty much. Well, that's really cool. And again, we'll have links at the bottom. Um, so you do pretty much a, everything almost, and you've got you've got some. I like. I see some in like the background yeah. there too, which is really cute. So yeah. I, I really like those, and it's perfect Halloween time. Even though it's just over now, but oh, well, it's always it's, Halloween it's for me. Spooky, <laughs> spooky year round. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so tell me, and and only again, only tell me what you're willing to divulge. I don't want you to uh, be uncomfortable or anything like that. It's not what this is about. Um, so what kind of mental health issues are you struggling with? Mm. Yeah, so I have anxiety, um, you know, more of a generalized state, and then I also, um, can go through panic attacks or periods of panic attacks. Um, you know, they affect, um, kind of in general in life, but, um, you know, in regard to kind of having a low level of social anxiety, I came up with against that as I started to teach yoga so mm -hmm. I started to discover that about myself that's yeah. really cool I never thought of like yeah. being in front of, of a class like that that just ter that, that terrifies me to be honest so that's really cool that you can get up and do that it was in the beginning um, it certainly um, you know took some getting used to because it's part performance part leading some you know leading the class through mm -hmm. um a a sequence and it's part creativity and it's kind of all of that together mm -hmm. and that is certainly anxiety making if you happen to be an introvert or yeah. you know, what have you so there's definitely been some times where I've actually worked through a panic or a low level panic attack while teaching yoga oh wow mm -hmm. yeah I mean it it's kind of the show must go on <laughs> sort of yeah. situation there's really nothing to do but uh, to dive right into it. So, um, so w I'm sorry. What was <laughs> this question? So, uh, well, that, that actually kind of narrowed it down. So, like, how do you, when you have those panic attacks, how do you work through those? Um, well, I have medication for that. Um, so I have, uh, you know, something that can just cut, cut the cycle of thought. Um, mm -hmm. and so that will kind of like instantly snap out of it. And then there's the, you know, the reverberations after that. Um, and, so I, um, you know, if I were in front of a class and I felt that heightened anxiety, I might take the medication. I might just ground myself in, kind of land where I am. And um, the great thing about teaching the yoga class is you can get them to not look at you. <laughs> That's brilliant, actually. So, yeah, that was actually a thing that I, uh, that I found online when I was looking up, like, how do you deal with who you are while you're teaching yoga. Like, how mm -hmm. do you deal with, like, feeling insecure? And one person had mentioned, like, my face goes red, so I just put everybody in child's pose. <laughs> yeah, I and, do that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I do, like, that is fortunate as opposed to being in a situation where you're in front of somebody sharing a thing mm -hmm. and you're doing more of a speech, you know, or a... Um, a panel or whatever it's it's not quite as easy to tell people to go into downward facing dog to get them not to look at you <laughs> <laughs> that's actually really quite brilliant yeah, yeah um so you already kind of answered my other question but like what kind of steps do you take um when you're like in the studio do you have a, a little more of a routine that you go through when you don't then there's no there's less pressure of people looking at you do you have a routine when you're just stressed out at home in the studio yeah, I mean, it depends on what kind of uh, work it is. If it's personal work or work for Etsy that, um, that you know, would be a new product or something that I can put off, I choose to rest on that. Mm -hmm. I choose to eliminate what I can. If it's client work, sometimes it's taking a break and taking a nap 
for a while. Naps are kind of my cure all. I love naps. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, for me, it's important to keep my yoga practice consistent, which yoga practice is different than yoga teaching. Cause you know, when I teach, I am not practicing mm-hmm. and I'm exercising a different part of the, you know, the experience of yoga for me, but it is not the same. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I think that that's a misconception that people have about teaching versus doing, Um, so I have to keep my practice very consistent and that will help, um, also breath practice, which is a part of yoga, but can be separated out. You know, it can be meditation or, um, you know, or breath work or pranayama as it's called in, um, in the yoga world, but Mm -hmm. all of those plan. Um, so it might be a matter of stepping away to do those activities, to come back to it. I tend to be more efficient in, um, in graphic design and marketing work. Mm -hmm. if I'm definitely level-headed and then you know there's an amount of setting it aside because if I'm in front of people teaching a class I need to set whatever else is going through Mm -hmm. my brain right of course um so developing that skill being in front of people and being able to turn on the automation in front of people has helped me to be able to do that when I'm at home working on client work. So that's really the only way I would work through um, a high level of anxiety or stress is if there were deadlines and due dates that I needed to meet. Mm-hmm. Um, but I make space for those other, um, you know, for those other activities to happen and I might come back to it at 7 p.m. rather than working a normal schedule because that's mm-hmm. going to be um, something that works for me better. Um, I tend to, uh, honor the cycles of whatever I'm feeling. I'm fortunate in that way that, um, you know, I have very few things locked into my schedule per week. I have, um, I'm teaching, uh, five classes at the moment, uh, regularly per week, which is not a ton as far as yoga teachers go. And I like to have that balance between, between yoga and doing graphic design and working on Etsy and that sort of thing too. So it's, Mm -hmm. you know, I definitely could bump up you know, more classes if I wanted to, or bump that back down, or adjust it. So I've got those five things locked into my schedule, and then everything else is pretty mutable. Um, So I'm able to act, to to take the time that I need to get things done. That being said, there are times over the summer, you know, especially over the summer, where I had to um, just kind of grin and bear it, and do the work, and get it done. Mm-hmm. Well, that actually leads to my next question, too. Was was there ever a time where you had to, like, mentally fight to be creative, and how were you handling that? Uh, you know, that most often comes up in teaching yoga, mm-hmm. uh, because, um, you know, you can have a sequence prepared or a class prepared, and then people present with something else entirely. Like, you know, you're prepared to teach this um, you know, a particular action, which is a a common way to structure a class. You might be Mm -hmm. teaching to stretch out, you know, left side body or something, um, for example, and you work that in, you know, over the course of, um, of class. And if you see that it's not working for people, you might have to just change exactly what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So, um, having some boilerplate things that I can, grab onto when I need them, um, certainly does help. So as, you know, I talked about going on, you know, kind of an autopilot class, like where Mm -hmm. at this point I can pretty much conceal what's happening internally from what happened, uh, what happens externally. So I kind of tap into some of those, um, themes that I've worked again and again and again, and then offer those instead, because it's something that I have to really invest less thought in, into executing. Mm -hmm. As far as, um, you know, graphic design goes, it, I, um, you know, I think it's, uh, just a matter of, um, taking the breaks when you need it and honoring the things that you need when you need it. Mm -hmm. So where did you, where did you learn all these thought process, processes to be able to calm yourself down or at least work through or, and be able to work on yourself internally and still keep a straight face externally? So where did you learn that? Um, so yoga, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta do yoga, man. Yeah, it's right. I, I recommend it. I'm not trying to get the hard sell, but, um, you know, it certainly helps me. And I think that there's a type of yoga for everybody. 
That doesn't mean that everybody will like yoga, but it certainly helps. And it doesn't have to be that. I also teach spin, you know, uh, cardio is endorphin inducing, so <laughs> any sort of cardio that you enjoy, but exercise mm -hmm. is super important. Um, I forget what... <laughs> <laughs> Where you so you learn you learned all oh where that did from, I learn that yeah. um it, and I also uh, went through therapy at the time where I was having um, some larger anxiety issues where it was really affecting my daily work and I couldn't um, you know at the time I had a, a forty hour a week you know standard job and I was having trouble getting to work mm -hmm. so there was an amount of just um, getting through the day there and then working with my boss at the time to, um, you know, to get through that. And then I, from there, worked with um, a therapist uh, and in the cognitive behavioral therapy realm. Uh, that's what I worked on with mm -hmm. my therapist, too, was cognitive behavior and being able to tell the difference between a rational thought and, like, you are just straight up freaking out. You know this isn't real. Like, stop. Like, why are you worried about these yeah. things and able to walk myself back from... A downward spiral. So I love myself some cognitive therapy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it was super helpful. Um, and you know, and then I transitioned from that place into yoga teacher training. Mm -hmm. uh, I decided that very quickly. You know, yoga had been a thread, and it's been a thread for a very long time for me. So spending that time with yoga and learning about it certainly did help. Um, he introduced me to just a very simple breath work practice which is you know inhales um to the count of five exhales to the count of five for mm -hmm. about five minutes set a timer mm -hmm. and that was um my introduction um to that and he said you know there's um there's a link between the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous systems and breath is the piece of that like mm -hmm. so you can control um both sides of that by controlling the breath Mm -hmm. And so that's why I think that um, yoga tends to be very effective for people because it gets, um, it gets to the root of that. And sometimes it takes physical activity to get rid of the other stuff so mm -hmm. you can come back to breathing. That's really like, <laughs> very simply. <laughs> well, it, it's, it's funny that you mentioned the breathing too because I have a similar kind of thing that I, I was in band for so, so long and we had to do breathing exercises and my instructor without even knowing, like my band director without knowing, was guiding us to like breathe in for eight counts, breathe out for eight counts and then he was working us into taking deeper breaths and holding for longer and being able to blow through the instrument. But I use, I've taught my friends how to do that when they're having a panic attack, mm -hmm. like, okay, you have to think, like, you have to count in your head, and that, and that's how they're, like, holding, like, they're breathing in for four, and then out for four, and, like, okay, well, let's try, let's try for six counts now, let's, now let's try for eight, and they can actually feel themselves calm down, and I do it all the time when I'm freaking <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, that's, even, I was totally out by accident, I don't think my directors even knew that that's what they were doing. They, I mean, they may have known. They, I don't know <laughs> that they knew that they were giving you the tools, but they, you know, they certainly were building a breath practice because, mm -hmm. I mean, like, woodwind, horn instruments are nothing if not a breath practice. Oh, yeah. Right? You know? Oh, yeah. Um, so I, uh, I think that's really interesting that you learned it and picked it up from there. Mm -hmm. It's effective. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so that's awesome that you learned it from yoga, so it's just almost a natural transition for you, which is, is awesome. Um so do you have any other coping mechanisms that you use, like a self-care routine or like you might not be totally stressed, but you just need to like take a break? Like what does that look like for you? Uh, so um, I do yoga at like 530 in the morning. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I do take naps in the afternoon, but um, if I'm able to stay consistent with a practice of, you know, um, at, at least four times a week, maybe up to six. I, mm -hmm. you know, take at least one day off. Um, I also do cardio, um, you know, anywhere from two to three times a week. So, okay. so um, if I can get it, an hour and a half of yoga in the morning is super effective. Um, and then napping is effective for me. It's mm -hmm. not effective for everyone. It seems to cut the cycle of stress and anxiety for me. Mm -hmm. That doesn't do it for everyone, and some people are hyped up to a point where they cannot sleep, mm -hmm. and that's a different side. 
I struggle on the other end where I'm <laughs> so tired and, yep. you know, uh, and panic attacks exhaust me. And um, I'm fortunate not to have nearly as many as I have mm-hmm. in the past, um, you know, in a, if I stay with those management tools. So I would say yoga, breathing practices, naps. Um, I'm just making sure you have enough rest, period. I think it's important, even if you can't get a nap, that you're at least trying to go to bed at a decent hour, and my therapist was always talking to me about consistency, Mm -hmm. putting yourself in a routine, and I'm so anal attentive anyway, that I've stuck to my routine, I have to go to bed at this time, if I go to bed later, I'm cranky in the morning, (laughs) I'm like a child. (laughs) Right, and then to understand that, like, what your amount of sleep Mm -hmm. um, is in an ideal world, I need more sleep than other people. Mm -hmm. And, um, I recognize that about myself. It is not something that is super popular in this society that, um, you know, that it's expected that we're constantly producing and constantly making and sitting Mm -hmm. at our desks. And, um, that's just not the way I work creatively. I cannot work for eight hours a day. I just, I cannot work for, to sit in a seat and to work eight hours a day consistently even if you know um even if you're making me like mm-hmm. I just I don't have that creative capacity and very few people I know do um so the uh that's just you know breaking it up um maybe taking a nap maybe coming back to the work when I um if I've got like an, an afternoon shift so it might be like a morning shift after yoga so Let's say 5.30 to, um, you know, I, I leave, kind of get back around 7.30, 8 o'clock. I might have a morning shift there of whatever work I can get done mm-hmm. before I teach yoga. Then I come back, maybe I nap. And then I might have an afternoon session of work or an afternoon evening session of work. Okay. Um, that's a lot of the way that I like to work. Um, the style of yoga that I do is often offered in the morning, so I've had to adapt to that schedule, so that means I might get six or seven hours of sleep, and that's not enough for me. I need eight or nine, so that means I need to catch up with it later. If I choose not to go in the morning, I can go to bed at, you know, 10 or 11 and get up at seven or eight and be fine. Right. Um, But that's the way it works for me, so that's kind of how I've I've identified those as, like, the Mm non-negotiables. Uh, you know, and regular medication is also a part of it. Um, I think that's not super popular to talk about in the yoga and wellness communities that, um, you know, medication is not always looked upon as a solution, but I absolutely think that it is. Mm -hmm. And I will even share with my students that, you know, like, oh, didn't yoga just, you know, like you just came around and you were fine. I was like, (laughs) No, I still not, take not I fine. still take Lexapro every day, mm-hmm. and that is an essential part of my self care routine. Yeah. It's not about masks or you know like or you know whatever else like facials or whatever you can do. Like mm-hmm. you know, it's not those. It's did you drink enough water? Did you have too much coffee today? Yeah. Are you taking your medication? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you doing the physical activity part of it? Mm-hmm. So, how long did it take you to find those boundaries? Did you struggle with that at all? Um, sure. Yeah. And I think the first boundary, um, you know, that I decided and that I was able to decide was to separate myself from, uh, an an eight hour, nine hour standard day, Mm -hmm. five, five days a week. So that, um, was, you know, an amount of freedom, but it's also a boundary. It's saying, you know, I need to have more say in what my schedule is. And you're going to notice that it's a better product. Right. You know, coming back to uh, graphic design or marketing, because I do front-end web development, too. And um, uh-huh. so if, you know, if I'm in my best state, your product is better. Right, of course. So you're not going to get my best work at 3 p.m. Like, if I haven't had a nap, you're not going to get it. And I've been working, you know, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., I'm crashed. Like, i got to, mm-hmm. like, finish up emails. I, you know, did my best to work within those that construct when I was there, but you're not always going to get the best product. Mm -hmm. Do Um, do your clients ever have issues with that kind of schedule or they just come to expect that from you once you've made that boundary? Uh, you know, I, um, 
I generally, you know, in contracts, I just, I lay out that I'm available nine to five, uh, Monday through Friday, and I do draw the boundary on the weekend that I'm not going to respond to emails unless it's really quick. But if it's something super involved and most definitely not urgent, Mm -hmm. I'm not answering. Right. If it's urgent, if it's an exception, sure, of course, like, you know, I'm going to prioritize the person over the situation, but that, you know generally I want to set those boundaries and honor them um but that being said you know very few times in the year does one client uh need all of those hours Mm -hmm. so I think it's pretty simple for me to do that and um to know that I'm not going to accept a call after 5 p.m but I might answer an email after 5 p.m I think is a distinction that um that you know is worth having. Um, you know, sometimes it's, I, I don't mind if I've got the time, but if it's not super urgent, I'm going to accept, you know, calls or inquiries within that time and try to keep the boundary afterward. Mm -hmm. And there's some things that are forced in the schedule, you know, like this is what I teach and I'm unavailable. I turn, you know, turn my phone on, do not disturb because it's necessary. So, Mm -hmm. Well, that's awesome. I haven't had a problem yet. <laughs> well, that's really good to know. It's right. Um, I mean, I'm still in the early stages. Not not early, early, but still figuring out. What yeah, that figuring is. out for my my freelance career and poss- I'm happy with my my new job, but uh, maybe eventually down the road I might be looking more at freelance. Even right now, I'm some there are some days I struggle to to balance all four of my long term clients, and it's just mass chaos and I have to tell I have to draw that line of like okay I actually have this weekend to not do any client work I did I busted my ass all this week to make sure that I got everything done but I'm not answering emails and sleep is definitely my 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 sanctuary and I guess I would add um you know as far as uh creative work goes having a really clear contract is also self-care yes (laughs) so yeah, and, and it said, it states when my hours are, um, when I'm available, what it'll cost if you, you know, if you uh, go over and above, you know, um, and how many revisions you get, uh, you know, what type of edits are included, what's extra, like what you can hire an ad- at an additional fee, mm-hmm. which also lies out what I'm not willing to do based on what we're quoted. Right it would all be additional. So you're all, you know, you're lying all of that out and then um, you can blame it back on the contract and what we signed and what we agreed on. I mm-hmm. refer to the contract very often just to make sure that I'm hitting what I've said that I will offer them. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm referring back to that document upon, you know, like what we agreed um, and, you know, and I, I, certainly offer that to the client as well to to um to let them know where those boundaries lie okay well that's awesome i'm, yeah. I'm glad you you figured all that out <laughs> well <laughs> it's a it's a constant process you know it's mm-hmm. been three years since i've been self-employed so mm-hmm. it's all <laughs> it's learn, all a work in progress learn, yeah learn something new every day for sure sometimes you got to add an extra clause you know <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm learning that too. I'm like, all right, yeah. well, we did that. I'm not doing that again. So we're going to move on from that. Right, right. <laughs> um, so why don't you, uh, uh, I answered all my questions. Shoot, this was fun. So why don't you tell us where, you, uh, where we can find more about you? Yeah, so on Instagram is probably the best place. So Midwestern Bones is graphic design and my personal um, Instagram Crush Design, so crush.design is my Etsy store, also on Instagram, and then Burn Yoga, B-E-R-N Yoga, is also on Instagram, (laughs) if you're interested (laughs) in um, goat yoga or my other style yoga. You you said goat, right? Yeah, I did. The the little, oh, God, yay. Okay, yeah. (laughs) You can check out, yeah, so you can see photos of me doing yoga with goats, or teaching yoga with goats around. Oh, that makes me that's so much better. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so then my obligatory disclaimer is: um, we are not medical professionals, uh, so please, please, please seek the help that you need for um, any for really anything. If it's a psychologist, a psychiatrist, if it's a, a doctor, um, a trusted friend, or um, 
at any at anybody that's willing to listen. I'm always willing to listen if you need to just get something off your chest. But there's no shame in medication. There's no no shame in therapy. Um, we've all been there. So there's no shame in it whatsoever. So please seek the help that you need. Um, I hope that you'll join me for our next couple episodes. I've got some awesome guests on the way. So thank you very much. It was great to have you. I appreciate seeing yeah. the studio. Absolutely. And your cats. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, So thank you guys for joining us, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Bye.